hey I reckon it is about time we show something different than the Jimny on the channel and today we're going to do a walk around of the exact opposite of the Jimny it's a big expedition ready pickup truck a Ford Ranger so without further ado let's get straight into it I'm George and you're watching the 4x4 lap So let's meet the owner of the vehicle, Petko. Thank, Thank you for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's letting us see this amazing vehicle. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us a bit about it? Make and model? Sure, this is a Ford Ranger 2015 2AB with 3.2 turbo diesel motor. It's the standard, standard uh, limited configuration with some off road tuning. Is it prepared for uh, touring? Overlanding? Is it, is it pre is prepared for, uh, for overlanding? Uh, it's, it's an overlander vehicle. It, it can do some off road trails, uh, not really hard, but it's, uh, it's good enough to get you to the places you need to be. Uh, exactly, yes. All right, so let's start at the front and move our way to the back. All right? Right. We're at the front of the Ranger here, and I see a big winch. Yes, we have, we have 10,000 pounds. Uh, Warm winch. Uh, warm ah, a very good brand. Yeah, the 10S uh, Evo, and I have two recovery points, additional mounted, welded to the to the chassis. Welded directly to the chassis. Directly and the, the winch chassis. plate, I guess. Yes. Exactly. They are uh, custom made or bought? Uh, no, custom made, custom ah. engineered. So and they are holding pretty well. They are holding pretty well. Tested a uh, couple of times. Uh, I don't have uh, much on the front because uh, I, I have problem with the weight, so keep it stock, keep it light. Ah, to keep the weight down. Yes. Uh, do you have some uh, bash plates? It's a, it's a factory bash plate. Uh, they are doing they, their job well, so I cannot complain. Yeah. Anything else to share at the front? Pretty stock, huh? Pretty stock, yes. Okay, let's move on. Moving on to suspension and tires, what kind of lift are you running? I have 2 inch lift in the front and 3 inch in the back, it's a Dobinson suspension. What and have you done to fit the 2 inch lift? Uh, actually nothing, uh, it no, just, just fits. Straight swap for spring and shocks exactly, and, yeah. and it goes. And the tires? The tires are Discovery S Discoverer STT Pro from Cooper, 33 inch tires. Uh, no, they are mud terrain, mud pretty terrain. aggressive. They are aggressive, yes, they are good, uh, really good off-road and not so bad on-road, not so really loud. You can travel uh, hundreds of kilometers uh, without uh, complaining. They are a little bit noisy, but uh, that's okay. What is the factory size of tires? I think 29.5 or oh, something. So you have moved up with 3 inches. Yes. Uh, was it rubbing somewhere? Did you need to... Cut something? Uh, yes, uh, it was a little bit rubbing, uh, rubbing on the plastic parts here, so I just cut them with the. Oh, just a bit, yeah. Just a bit, uh, not not really uh, nice, uh, not beautiful, but it it works now. Not yeah, I, I barely notice. <laughs> <laughs> and the wheels, the rims? The rims are they are 70 inch uh, alloy rims from uh, Delta Aventura, I think is the brand, and I have additional offset. Uh, Stock was 45 mils plus, and now I have uh, zero offset with additional plate. Yeah, I so can see they're sticking a bit up. <laughs> sticking a bit up, yes. Great. Um, and at the back, uh, you mentioned that's a three-inch lift. 
Yeah, it was meant to be two inch, uh, but uh, the leaf springs uh, were not uh, so strong to keep the weight of this vehicle. So I, I bought another uh, from Dobinson with uh, plus 500 kilogram. Uh, yeah, that's quite a lot quite operated. A the yeah. springs but of course when you need to have an expedition vehicle you have to think about the weight all the time yeah. and so with this uh, leaf springs from Dominson plus five or six hundred kilo uh, now it's really stable <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the behavior off-road okay uh, let's move on so we're at the back of Petco's uh, vehicle here and I see there is a lot going on uh, I see you have the stock bumper, which is still standing, but the storage space, you have a lot going on. Can you walk us through it? Yes, it's a custom-made, custom-engineered um, canopy. It's a steel frame with alloy uh, plates on the sides. And on the top, what's it interesting here, on the top is open. Actually, there is no top on this canopy. Uh, the top is the roof, uh, rooftop tent. The tent it's, is the top. Yeah, so the, that obviously keeps the cost down and the weights down. Yes, it keeps some weights down. Uh, this is um, from Majulina 360, the, the largest tent they have, uh, 200, 220 centimeters and uh, 180. It's oh, a really a king size bed. It's a, it's a really big tent. Uh, a four person can, can uh, take place in it. Um, and on the back I have here recovery plates with some melted rubber on it. Uh, and here I can carry uh, to three bicycles also. Battle scars on the traction boards. What kind of brand is the roof rack, the boards? The boards, uh, they are, I, I don't know, they are no name boards from eBay. So also. you don't need to get a max track to hold and do its job, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, maybe my is a better, but uh, this doing also. Yeah. I'm curious, let's see how long does it take to set up the tent. And it's already set. It's already set. You can go to sleep. The most important question for me is, can you store the bedding inside? Or do you have to get everything out? Uh, no, no. Uh, everything is inside. You can, you have you can uh, close it with everything. You can close it with everything. We have uh, here around 40 centimeters of space. So you can put and here in the biggest one. And in the front is around 20. So yeah, you have all yeah. pillows, sleeping bags. and. You happy with the mattress? Really happy, yes. Yeah. Let's move on to the more interesting part. Oh, that's a huge storage setup. Can you walk us through it? Uh, yes, um, I have this wood plate here uh, in the middle, what's separating the storage place in, in upper and lower uh, area. On the upper part, I put some, some camping furniture, sleeping bags and so light light things what can I can easily access and you do not have to to take them all all the time oh, yeah. and that's so. a smart way to separate and utilize the high storage compartment that is usually empty and hard to take a benefit from in a pickup truck yes and the, the lower part I have this uh, these cases they're quite quite cheap cases from the music story uh, proposal proposed for music equipment But I actually found them really useful for that case also. So here, here is my kitchen. Here I have uh, propane, gas propane, and um, uh, and plates and dishes and everything you need. Also, some spices and 
everything you need to, to... And obviously the food that is not in the fridge. So everything for cooking is in this music box. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's, uh, uh, the benefit also is you, you can just take that, that box and move it or, uh, around the camp. And uh, you, you should not just cooking the, uh, around the vehicle. You can go cook, cook in the camp. Uh, that's the benefit. So if you do it again, would you opt for a drawer setup or again boxes? Do you think again it's boxes? I think it's it's much cheaper. One of them costs 200 euro, I think. And uh, th there is also another benefit. You you can just remove all this this stuff, and uh, you you have a big uh, cargo area to transport. If you buy a new new coach or refrigerator, you you can you can actually use your pickup truck as a pickup. Exactly. <laughs> uh, in in. In half, a, in half an hour I can remove everything and, and have uh, a transport vehicle. Yeah. And in the other box? In the other box I have some, some technical tools for repairing, uh, recovery gear, some batteries, uh, propane, fl uh, propane bottles and uh, so technical stuff, uh, medicine and stuff like that. Yeah. And obviously for an expedition vehicle the most important things are fridge, water and a 12 volt system so i have uh, two additional batteries one um, deep cycle acid battery in the back over the wheel arcs uh, it's uh, actually unused space for a pickup so I, I just put the battery there i see it's the deep cycle optima battery it's a deep cycle optima battery uh, 65 um, amperes uh, ampere hours i think are they separated from the main battery? Yes, um, I have additional electronic uh, with uh, voltage booster and relay. So when I'm driving the vehicle, this, this battery is charging. Uh, the current is limited to 10, 10 amperes um, charge current. So you cannot uh, overheat it or, or damage it. And that's an inverter? And that's an inverter, a 1500 watt inverter for additional 200 30 volts. You cannot put, uh, unfortunately, you cannot put f coffee machine, but uh, some other stuff you can put. <laughs> <laughs> what are you mostly using it for? Uh, actually, for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to know that you have the option, I guess. Uh, I just uh, took to, I'm thinking to remove that because I'm, I'm not, not really need it. I'm using it to power my vacuum cleaner when I'm cleaning the vehicle, and that's all for this now. Uh, I have also this lithium lithium uh, power bank. Uh, this uh, has also 220 volts inverter bu built in. But uh, the benefit of it uh, is you can just take it and go go in the tent with the with uh, this battery or go outside in the camping. Uh. So you can just uh, have power for your laptop or anything you you need. So plenty of juice to power all your electricity. Yes. And uh, fuses and wiring? Uh, fuses and wiring is uh, self-made. Uh. Uh, save some money and do it properly. Because <laughs> if it's not done well, it can put your vehicle on fire. So it's uh, exactly. really nice to know how it's done. And be aware of all the technical stuff that's going on there. Uh, exactly. But uh, I'm also an electrician, so I can do it by myself. Uh. <laughs> so for the, for the water setup, I have... Um, Two, two 40 liters, uh, 40 liters uh, water tanks there. That are behind the fridge? Behind the fridge, so actually this place is not useful. And uh, with 12 volt uh, pump, you, you can just, uh, you can just uh, have water uh, all the time. Top. Yes, you can also take shower. Or is the stuff. pump inside the tanks? It's, uh, it's inside the tank and you can just remove it with uh, and yeah. put it in the other tank when it's empty to fill the first one. And you have connected the two tanks, obviously. No, no, no. Oh, you, you just need to swap the other one? Yes, it's a, it's a canister a canister from, from the market. Uh -huh. It's a cheap one, so uh, nothing special. Yeah. And the fridge? It's a 40 liter uh, compressor fridge from Mobico. Uh, it's quite... Um, it, it uses a really, really less power and, uh, f and cools down really fast. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Are 40 liters enough for your needs? You mentioned sometimes you fit four people in the tent with yeah, the kids. Yeah, actually it's enough. Uh, what you need is, uh, is uh, mostly for the beer <laughs> and some meal. So it's enough. If you have other products, I have them here. Yeah, of course, you stay at camp as long as there is beer. Uh, if the beer is over, camping is over. Camping is over, <laughs> that's the, the true. Okay, anything else here? 
Yeah, I have some additional tools there, shuffle, axe, um, saw, and uh, stuff what you need sometimes in the in the wilderness. And uh, some extra storage. And extra on storage the door. for quick access here on the door, yes. And that's all. Before we go to the cockpit of the Ranger, I see you have some serious protection to keep the big tent safe. Yeah, it's a quite high, uh, high vehicle, so you, when you're driving in the forest here on the Balkan, a lot of uh, tree branches are hitting you, and I want to prevent some direct hits on the tent, uh, so I put this frame, a steel frame, around it. To, uh, yeah, of course, we're not in the desert, there are lots of tight tracks here yeah. in this part of the world. And after that, I'll put some LED lights uh, to be useful. Uh, are they bright? They're, they're doing their job. There. Yeah. Uh, is it noisy on the highway, the wind going mm, No, no, the tires are much noisier. <laughs> <laughs> Overcompensate. Okay, let's go inside. So we're inside the cockpit. I see it's pretty stuck. It's a pretty stock vehicle, yes, it has automatic transmission. Um, stock uh, from the factory, we have a differential lock in the back and um, something like differential lock in the front, uh, which is preventing wheels from spinning when you lift them. Uh, electronic control. Yes, uh, I think it's, uh, it has some benefits uh, um, if you compare it with mechanical uh, differential lock because you, you can still uh, steer, steer the vehicle uh, and uh, with the mechanical differential lock in the front, uh, I have the experience, you yeah, cannot steer yeah. it at all. If you have a full selectable locker at the front, you need to keep your wheel straight. And when you have electronic control, you can just easily steer and it does all the work. We'll see in time if it's strong enough. If you break it, you can replace it. But so far, I think it's working, it's doing its job. It's doing the job. I'm sure the, the mechanical differential lock can take much more punishment from this one, but uh, it's doing the job. Uh, it's an expedition tour after all. <laughs> Time for a Q&A session with some beers. Uh, cheers. Cheers. So, why a Ford Ranger? would be my first question. Uh, it's actually the, the strongest engine in the segment and you can put uh, bigger tires as 33s uh, without big effort. Um, it's of course a, re a reliable vehicle uh, and uh, quite big uh, cargo cargo area so you can take a so lot of... Obviously that's why I pick up truck because you need to store many things and a Ranger it's reliable. It's re reliable, it has really strong Engine, I'm, I'm really happy with the transmission and the engine combination. It it takes you. It has a lot of power anytime. A, a lot of torque um, to bring low you out. Low gears. Low gears. Yes, they're really low. Uh, and uh, the payload of the Ranger is around uh, 1,100 kilograms. So, oh, so more the, than a ton. More than a ton. We can put the Jimny at the back. <laughs> Actually, I can put the Jimny in the back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also curious to know. How long can you stay off the grid with the setup that you have? Uh, depends. So if you have a water source uh, nearby, maybe a month, I don't know, uh, forever. But uh, Plenty of food. <laughs> plenty of food. You can put... <laughs> Not enough plate. beer in the fridge oh, for yes. a month. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe I need a bigger fridge for that. But <laughs> actually with this water, what uh, I carry inside, maybe maybe a week uh, without problems, we can yeah. stay off grid. More than enough for Europe, I think. Yes. But here on the Balkan, we, you can always find some water source nearby, so that's not big yeah, issue. That's not a big of a deal. Yeah. So, if you're starting the build now, what would you do differently? Any regrets? Maybe I could take the smaller rooftop tent also, because this bright vehicle is really hard to, to maneuver it in the forest, in the small areas like that when a lot of branches are hanging around uh, so a bit of an overkill it's a little bit overkill but uh, i have i have go through everywhere with every expedition i went uh, and i don't not did not damage the the, the rig so maybe it's the, the the right decision up to now but uh, it's quite heavy you can save mo some some weight somewhere yeah, so you can still go anywhere but you get a bit stressed while maneuvering in the tight corners uh, exactly yes uh, uh, any advice for first-time owners of a Ranger? 
Yes, maybe go bigger tires for the first time. You can you can put 33s. That's a big advantage in off-road if you have bigger tires, but not bigger than 33s because uh, after that you can not really drive on road, uh, and 33s are enough yeah. good for off-road. Is my uh, have you tried other tires before that, smaller sizes? Yes, a lot of tires I have tried. Um, I have 31s uh, all-terrain tires, but they are for the mud. It's nothing for the mud. Yeah. I had also the stock tires, but I have not driven them off-road. Uh, yeah, so the advice would be go straight for a 33. They fit? They fit, and uh, if you get a really quality tire, uh, they're, they're not vibrating and not quite loud uh, on road. And what about fuel economy with the big tent and the big tires? Um, it's not quite bad, around, around 15 liters per kilo, uh, 100 kilometers. Um, I know it's heavy rig, so you cannot sp uh, save a lot of fuel. So 15 liter by 100. That's yes, on road, off road, in the city, always 15 liter. <laughs> uh, do you have some extra tank, fuel tank? No, no. Yeah. I, I don't need it here in Bulgaria, so you, I can go off road for two, three hundred kilometers. So that's enough. Yeah. Thank you for joining us at this walk around episode, something different on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to see more of this type of content. Cheers.